Hi everyone, welcome back to Dental Zen. Today we are here with a new video on the topic radical assist. In this video, we'll talk about the introduction, etiology, pathogenesis, clinical features, radiographic features, histopathology, differential diagnosis, and treatment of radical assist. So before we begin, I want all of you to subscribe to Dental Zen. If you have not done that till now, also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new new videos. Now the most important point for radical assist is that it is a type of inflammatory odontogenic cyst because the cause is inflammation and odontogenic because it is arising from tooth forming tissues so here is your important fiber question what is the origin of radicalysis so it is coming from remnants of herd pigs epithelial root sheath which are also known as cell rest of malazae so where are these remnants located they are located in the periodontal ligament of a tooth so on getting inflammatory stimulus they will form a cyst here where around the apex of the root of the tooth that is why this cyst is also known as periapical cyst peri means around apical is apex of the root of the tooth also known as apical dental cyst apical periodontal cyst or root end cyst because it is located at the end of the root so in your exam you can get questioned by any of these names now second important thing is etiology what is the main cause of radical cyst and that is very very important by my question it is dental caries dental caries leads to pulpal necrosis which provides an inflammatory stimulus because of which cell rest of malazae in the periodontal ligament gets stimulated and they will form radical cysts. So all the causes which leads to pulpal necrosis like trauma, dense in dente, silicate restorations, improper restorations, endodontically treated teeth with formocrisol materials can lead to formation of radical cysts. Now coming to pathogenesis, how this happens? All these causes will leading to pulpal necrosis will give an inflammatory stimulus because of which inflammatory cells like lymphocytes, plasma cells and macrophages will gather in the periapical region and will form a mass of cells which is known as periapical granuloma because of which the cell rest of malazae which are also present in the periodontal ligament they get stimulated they are like why should we be coiled we should also do something so they start to proliferate and they start to form a mass of cells which keeps on enlarging till the time the central cells in the mass they are cut off from the blood supply because the blood supply is in the periphery so the cells in the cell will die and they will form a cavity here so we see a cavity in the center which is lined by cell rest of malazae and this cavity is known as radical cyst or periapical cyst slowly this cavity will enlarge and will lead to cystic enlargement so in the pathogenesis of radical cyst we can describe it in four phases first phase is the phase of initiation in which there is stimulation of cell rest of malazae second phase is the phase of proliferation when these cells are proliferating third phase is the phase of periapical cyst formation where the central cells die and there is formation of cavity and fourth phase is the phase of cystic enlargement now sometimes you can be asked about the etiopathogenesis that can come as a short note for your exam so to know the pathogenesis of radical cyst in detail and how to attempt this question you can tap on the i button above for the video on the same now let's know few more terms sometimes we have a cyst in which the epithelial lining is not complete because there is an obstruction and that obstruction is due to the apex of the root of the tooth which comes to lie in the lumen of the cyst root ka jo apex hai wo cyst ke lumen mein aa jata hai so we cannot see complete epithelial lining this is known as periapical pocket cyst but sometimes we can see complete epithelial lining this happens because there is no obstruction so in that case the cyst is separated from the apex of the root so this is called periapical true cyst now sometimes cyst can form on the lateral side of the root of the tooth here and this is known as lateral radicular cyst now sometimes we see periapical granuloma in which we can see some cell rests of malazae proliferating to form squamous epithelial cells so these groups of squamous epithelial cells which are known as islands of squamous epithelial cells lying in the periapical granuloma without the formation of cyst and this granuloma is what is referred to as base cyst by endodontist now talking about the clinical features this is the most common odontogenic cyst so it constitutes about 60 percent of all the jaw cysts it can occur at the ages between 20 to 60 years of age peak is seen in third decade many cases are seen in fourth decade and after fifth decade cases start to decline males are affected more more than females now if we talk about the site maxilla is affected more than mandible now this is in contrast to dentigerous cyst and okc where mandible is affected more than maxilla but in radical cyst it is maxilla which is affected more than mandible and that too anterior maxilla why 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 now trauma is the reason 
which is one of the causes of the radicular cyst it affects most commonly the maxillary anterior teeth jab bhi hame chot lagti hai sabse pehle hamare upar ke aage ke daan tutte hain so that is the reason and that is the reason why males are affected more than females because they sustain more injuries and also females are less affected because they take better care of their maxillary anterior teeth due to aesthetics so because of these two reasons we see male predominance in radicular cyst and that can be your five question now the formation of radicular cyst is rare in deciduous teeth because it drains the infection readily so there is the chances of cyst formation are very very less now talking about the clinical presentation pulp is dead so will there be any symptoms no so it is usually symptomless seldom painful or sensitive to percussion so there will be no signs or symptoms but there is synchoanon synchoanon means an essential condition an absolute necessary thing which has to be there to call it as a radicular cyst is the presence of non vital tooth so non vital tooth to hona hi chahiye agar hum radicular cyst ka diagnosis dena chahte hain and that is one point which helps us to differentiate it from all other lesions which occur in the periapical location so radicular cyst is most common cause of jaw swelling it is a slowly enlarging swelling because of the chronic inflammatory process it occurs over long duration initially it will be bony hard swelling covered by bone but later on as the bone resorption will take place it the bone can thin out now sometimes in long standing cases there can be sudden flare up, flare up and will lead to formation of abscess that is there will be formation of pus and this can spread to the adjacent areas it can cause cellulitis it can spread to bone it can cause osteomyelitis and even this pus in the periapical region can drain into the mouth through a tract which is known as fistula so all these can be the complications of the radicular cyst fistula formation osteomyelitis and cellulitis now talking about the radiographic features it is a cyst so it has to be a radial ascency so we see an oval or round or pear shaped radial ascency in the periapical region of a non vital tooth now the borders of this radial ascency are well defined and sometimes we can see a radiopaque border that is we can see a white line on the periphery which represents the bony reaction now important viva question here is which is other lesion which can look similar to periapical cyst on radiograph so that is your periapical granuloma isi mein to cyst bana tha baad mein yes periapical granuloma also present as a periapical radial ascency then how do we differentiate between the two so that depends on the size of this radial ascency if the size is more than 2 cm we can consider it as periapical cyst or radicular cyst if the size is less than that then we can suspect periapical granuloma also you may be asked how would you differentiate periapical periapical abscess from periapical cyst or radicular cyst so this can be done on the basis that in cases of periapical abscess the borders of the radial lucency will be irregular whereas in case of periapical cyst the borders are well defined now talking about the histopath this is one cyst in which the epithelium is of variable thickness that means the number of cell layers is different in different regions of the epithelium so that is important point it can vary from 1 to 50 cell layers that means in one region you can only see one layer of epithelial epithelial cells and in other regions you can see up to 50 layers of cells now they can also vary from 6 to 20 cell thick now it is non keratinized epithelium we do not see keratin on the surface rarely we can see auto keratinized or para keratinized epithelium now if we are talking for the histopath of radicular cyst important viva question is what is the proliferating pattern of this epithelium so this epithelium is proliferating in a way which leads to the formation of arcades so this is known as arcading pattern arcades are like when we have a closed passageway on the sides of which we can see arches like this so this is known as arcade pattern so in radicular cyst the epithelium is growing in arcades and loops loops which is surrounded by inflammatory cell the connective tissue gets enclosed in the epithelium so this contains inflammatory cells and this get contains collagen fibers and also some blood vessels get are there so this type of pattern which is seen in radicular cyst in which the epithelium is proliferating in a way that it is enclosing the surrounding inflammatory connective tissue within it in the form of arcades 
is referred to as RKD. But there sometimes we can see changes in this epithelial lining. That is in place of stratified squamous epithelial lining, we can see respiratory type of epithelium when it becomes pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelial lining. So that can happen when it is close to maxillary sinus. Also, it can change to mucus cells and there can be mucus metaplasia. That is this epithelial lining can change into mucus cells. Now, if we talk about the connective tissue, so there are a lot of collagen fibers and they are densely arranged at the periphery of the cyst whereas the connective tissue which is just close to epithelium the fibers are loosely arranged so loose connective tissue adjacent to epithelial lining now this is an inflammatory cyst so most important thing that has to be there in connective tissue is presence of acute and chronic inflammatory cells so we can see a lot of lymphocytes plasma cells and macrophages in the connective tissue but we can also see remnants of odontogenic epithelial islands as well now, there is another important bodies which can be seen in the wall of the radicular cyst is rustal bodies. Now, what are these rustal bodies? These are round eosinophilic structures which can be seen in radicular cyst. So, what are these structures? We have plasma cells here. Plasma cells produce immunoglobulins. So, these immunoglobulins get accumulated here. So, these inclusions of immunoglobulins in the cells is referred to as rustal bodies. So, the important thing that you have to remember is they are immunoglobulin inclusions. Now, apart from these, we can also have hyaline bodies, which can sometimes be present close to the epithelial lining. These hyaline bodies can be arc shaped, linear, curvilinear, hairpin shaped structures, and they can be hematogenous in origin. So we have few points. They were first described by the way in 1918. They are also referred to as trusted bodies, mostly found in epithelial linings, but can also be present in the capsule. Their size is 0.1 mm. They are linear, straight, curved, hairpin shaped or arc shaped structures. They are brittle because they frequently fracture and they are hematogenous in origin. So that can be important fiber question. Now, apart from that, we can also see cholesterol cleft. Sometimes we can see cholesterol crystals which are lying in the fibrous capsule so the cholesterol crystals can also be found in the lumen of this cyst so when we make a section so the cholesterol will come out and in place of that we will see a space which is referred to as cholesterol clefts so what is the source of this cholesterol that is your important viva question degeneration and disintegration of all these inflammatory cells which are fighting in this war lymphocytes plasma cells macrophages they will die and cholesterol will get released from their walls and it will accumulated it will accumulate there in the form of crystals now other source of cholesterol can be from the circulating plasma lipids so that can be your viva question what is the source of cholesterol now talking about the contents of the cystic lumen when we suspect a cyst then we have to do a procedure which is known as fine needle aspiration cytology where we withdraw the fluid from the cystic cavity so in radical cyst this fluid can give shimmering gold appearance so it can vary from brown to shimmering gold or straw color so that is important viva question shimmering gold appearance is due to presence of cholesterol in the lumen now low protein concentration is seen in this fluid so when we try to stain it it will pale eosinophilic in staining reaction now the if we talk about the protein levels, we have already discussed in odontogenic keratosis that if it is less than 3.5 gram per 100 ml or consider it as less than 5 gram per 100 ml, then we consider it as OKC. But if the protein levels are more than 5 gram per 100 ml, then we can consider it as tendigerous cyst or radical cyst. And we can also see cholesterol crystals in this fluid. Now talking about the differential diagnosis. So all those things which can look similar to periapical cyst or radical cyst are periapical granuloma, scar, periapical abscess, other odontogenic cysts arising in this location, surgical defects, osteomyelitis, all these can be the differential diagnosis. Now talking about the treatment, we can do root canal treatment of the tooth and later on we can do the episectomy that is we can cut the apex of the root of the tooth and we can do filling or otherwise we can do extraction of the tooth in that case the tooth is completely removed along with the cyst now sometimes while removing the cyst the epithelium can get fragmented 
and the remnants can remain behind and then a cyst can develop from this these remnants again and that is known as residual cyst that is cyst which is left after extract that is retained periapical cyst from teeth that have been removed so tooth has been extracted after days or months we can see still see a radiolucency there and that is residual cyst so that is all for radicular cyst so if we talk about the summary the most important points that it is inflammatory or odontogenic cyst its origin is from cell rest of malazae which are the remnants of Hudwig's epithelial root sheath etiology the most important cause is dental caries and then trauma then if we talk about pathogenesis it has four phases phase of initiation phase of proliferation phase of cyst formation and phase of cyst enlargement then if we talk about the clinical features, it peak is seen in third decade, then males are affected more than females and anterior maxilla is the most common site. Then if we talk about the radiographic features, it presents as a periapical radiolucency on a radiograph and it has to be differentiated from periapical granuloma which is its radiographic differential diagnosis and also we have to differentiate it from periapical abscess. Then if we talk about the histopathological features, it is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium but it is of variable thickness that is number of cell layers vary in different regions of the cyst and then the important pattern which is seen in this epithelium of radicular cyst is known as arcading pattern connective tissue is inflammatory fibrous type so we'll see a lot of inflammatory cells in the connective tissue which can be lymphocytes plasma cells and macrophages now talking about the treatment we can extraction of the tooth and we can do root canal treatment of the tooth so that is all for radical assist i hope you enjoyed the video if you really like the video do give a thumbs up keep following keep watching dental zen and good luck for your exams see you in the next video till then take care bye bye